for an intermediate pressure x by m is proportional to p to the power of 1 over n or I can write this as x by m is equal to k into p to the power of 1 over n. I am taking log on both the sides, I am going to get log x by m is equal to log k plus 1 over n log p. So, this is similar to straight line equation. Now, a plot of a plot of log x by m, x is a mass of gas on a adsorbent mass m, log x by m versus log p, if you plot log x by m versus log p, if you plot a graph, you will get a straight line. The intercept of this will give you log k. And the slope of this is equal to 1 over n. Now, do you go? Now, look options. Option A, n. Option 2, 1 over n. Option 3, log k. Option 4, minus log k. That is option A, n. Option B, 1 over n. Option C, log k. Option D is minus log, minus log k. So, therefore, the option B should be correct one that is 1 over n because slope is equal to 1 over n. Let us see the next question now. Among the electrolytes, sodium sulphate, calcium chloride, aluminum sulphate and NH4Cl, the most effective coagulating agent for AS2S3 AS sol is, four options are given, sodium sulphate, calcium chloride, aluminum sulphate and ammonium chloride. So, let us get into the concept. AS2S3 AS sol is a negative sol. The negative sol because adsorption of S2 minus on the surface of particles of colloids. For coagulation of negative sol, you need a cation from this electrolyte and the cation is called as active ion. The cations contributed by these electrolytes, aluminum sulphate produces Al3 plus calcium contributes Ca2 plus from calcium chloride, then Na plus ion coming from sodium sulphate, NH4 plus ion coming from ammonium chloride. So, among this aluminum ions are more capable of coagulation compared to Ca2 plus, compared to Na plus and NH4 plus. This is in accordance with Hardy schools rule. Hardy schools rule. According to Hardy schools rule, the coagulation capacity of an electrolyte is directly proportional to the charge magnitude on the active ions. So, these are the active ions. The charge magnitude highest in case of Al3 plus compared to Ca2 plus, Na plus, and NH4 plus. So, therefore, aluminum is more capable of coagulating compared to remaining electrolytes. It does not mean that remaining electrolyte will not co cause coagulation. They also do coagulation, but the problem is, so this is most effective when compared to remaining. So, option C must be the correct one. The next question is gold numbers of protective colloids A, B, C and D are 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 
0 0.01, 0 0.10 and 0 0.005 respectively. The order of their protective power is This is according to gold number. Protective power, protective power of a lyophilic colloid is inversely proportional to gold number. So, lower the gold number, best is its protective power. So, among all the four lyophilic colloids given here with their gold numbers. So, this is D which is having a lowest gold number. So, D is having lowest gold number. The next lowest gold number among all this is B. This is B. The next lowest gold number is C. So, this is D this is C, this is B. The next lowest gold number is A. So, this is, is the harder. The protective power of lyophilic sol D is greater than that of B, which is greater than that of C, which is greater than that of A. If you look at all these options, the option A seems to be correct one. So, coagulation in a protective power of lyophilic colloid D is greater than B, greater than C, than A. So, option A should be the correct option. Remember, while deciding this, the reciprocal of gold number, if you take, comparison becomes easier. So, gold numbers decides the ability of lyophilic sol in protecting lyophobic colloid. A best lyophilic sol to be chosen whose gold number is lowest. So, among all the options given here, the D is the best lyophilic sol in protecting lyophobic call from coagulation. So, D is the best option of choosing for protection of lyophobic sol from coagulation. So, this is the harder. So, therefore, option A should be correct one. The next question is match the following type. So, this is in the column A, there are list of catalysts, four catalysts. In the column B, you have industrial product. In the column A, vanadium pentoxide as a catalyst, Ziegler Nutta, peroxide, finely divided hydrogen as a catalyst. And the products are highly density polythene, that is HDPE, high density polyethylene. Acrylonitrile that is polyacrylonitrile pan, ammonia, sulfuric acid. Now, let us uh, match in column A with the column B. Vanadium pentoxide is used as a catalyst for the manufacture of sulfuric acid by a process called contact process. So, SO2 plus O2 gave rise to SO3. For this process, I can use platinum as a catalyst, but the platinum get poisoned more easily in presence of dust and arsenic impurities. So, therefore, the preferred catalyst is vanadium pentoxide. Then Ziegler Nutta is a catalyst used for the preparation of HDP, high density polyethylene HDP. It is nothing but titanium tetrachloride plus Trihethyl aluminium C2H5 thrice Al. C2H5 thrice Al. Trihethyl aluminium. 
So Ziegler nut dye is used for preparation of HDPE and the peroxide generally used for the preparation of PAN that is polyacrylonitrile. Acrylonitrile CH2 double bond CH single bond CN upon polymerization gives you PAN. This is free radical mechanism so therefore peroxide is used as a catalyst. Last but not the least is manufacture of ammonia by Haber's process. In Haber's process N2 plus 3H2 give rise to 2NH3. This is manufacture of ammonia by direct combination of nitrogen and hydrogen in presence of finely divided iron as a catalyst and MO as a promoter. So A4, B1, C2, D3. So option A must be correct option. The next question, which of the following compounds will not give positive chromyl chloride test? Options are here. First one, mercury chloride. Second one, cupric chloride, zinc chloride, anilinium hydrochloride. Dear students, the problem here Chromate chloride test is answered by chloride salt which are water soluble only. Only water soluble chloride salt will answer for this test. Only water soluble chloride salt will answer for this test. So those salts which are having covalent nature will not give this test. When a salt containing chloride radical which is supposed to be water soluble when treated with potassium dichromate along with concentrated sulfuric acid you see the orange red vapors which are nothing but CrO2 Cl2 nothing but chromyl chloride. So this compound is formed upon mixing with a water soluble chloride salt with potassium dichromate in the presence of sulfuric acid concentrated. Here options are given like this. First one is mercury chloride, copper chloride, zinc chloride, anilinium hydrochloride. This is water soluble, water soluble, water soluble. All these three are B, C, D are ionic crystals. Whereas mercury chloride having large amount of covalent character therefore mercury chloride will not will not answer for chromate chloride test so therefore option a should be correct one The next question is the catalytic activity of transition metals and their compounds is ascribed mainly to that means the reason behind catalytic ability of transition elements. The elements from group number 3 to group number 11 commonly called transition elements because these elements possess partially filled d orbital either in their atomic state or in their one of the oxidized state. And due to their ability of participation of Ns and N-1D electron in bonding, they are able to exhibit variable oxidation state. They exhibit a variety of oxidation state ranging from plus 1 to plus 8. 
So this is the main cause of D block elements, some of the D block elements acting as a very good catalyst. We have seen in the match the following type question, most of the D block elements are used as a catalyst, iron used in Abus process, vanadium in the form of vanadium pentoxide is used as a catalyst in the manufacture of sulfuric acid. Nickel is used in the hydrogenation process. Platinum is used in the hydrogenation process. So the reason behind why D block element acting as a very good catalyst is their ability of exhibiting variable oxidation state. So among four, the op four options here, their ability to adopt variable oxidation state should be correct one. So option A is correct one. Next question, which of the following pairs has the same size? Option A, Zn2 plus, Ophmium 4 plus. Option B, Zirconium 4 plus, Ophmium 4 plus. Option C, Fe2 plus, Ni2 plus. Option D, Zirconium 4 plus, Titanium 4 plus. Dear students, Zirconium and Ophmium belong to group number 4, same group and this is belong to 4D series, this is belong to 5D series. Atomic number of this is 40, this is 72. So from 57 lanthanum to 71 lutetium, you have lanthanide contraction. So because of lanthanide contraction, the atomic or ionic size having almost charge, same charge magnitude will remain the same. Then what is lanthanide contraction? As you move from lanthanum to lutetium, as you move from lanthanum to lutetium, Due to the imperfect shielding effect of 4F orbitals, there is gradual decrease in the atomic size and this is called as lanthanide contraction. Because of lanthanide contraction, when you move down the group in the fourth group from zirconium to ophmium, the atomic size almost remains the same. Since both these two having same charge magnitude, their ionic size also should have been the same. So which of the following pairs has the same size? So option B should be correct one due to lanthanide contraction. <music>